Remote sensing is a multinational collaboration sharing knowledge and data to understand things like crop sustainability. We use satellites, airplanes, or ground-based systems to observe different areas to, to obtain some information of the Earth's surface. Remote sensing affects people in ways uh, they don't even think about. It is used to inform their weather forecasts. It's used to uh, let people know when disasters have happened and where they've happened and where people are going to be affected most. Uh, so it's, it's kind of ubiquitous. Remote sensing through satellites allows for a large scale synoptic view of the Earth. The only uh, monitoring technology able to measure the complete Earth with sufficient uh, spatial resolution. If you're just observing from the ground, you have a very, very good idea about what's happening at that point. The remote sensing gives you that big picture uh, that you can't get from a single instrument on the ground. Models leave uncertainty, but remote sensing informs those models to make them more accurate. GRSS is a community of researchers and practitioners who create tools so geoscientists can understand Earth systems. And the communities like GRSSS uh, allow a platform for knowledge integration. The importance of being able to organize our satellite imagery now in a way that allows us to basically drill into a single pixel, let's say 25 by 25 meter resolution, back in time, 40 years, to look at that piece of land or that coastline how has it changed over time? So the, the quality of the processing of the data is also really important. I think that uh, what we're finding is that remote sensing is becoming more and more uh, relevant to people's lives because we have so many more sensors that are able to image an area. So it's not always uh, possible uh, for human to, to, be, to be visit all the places and to get in, uh, in situ information. Utilizing uh, remote sensing sensors, you are able to able to get a um, holistic view of, of the area, both in time, both in spatial and in temporal uh, scale. In the case of remote sensing, you're actually measuring 100% of the, covering the whole ground. In India, remote sensing gives data for areas where there is no in situ data. In India, we have uh, it's basically the, the economy is based on agriculture, so it's very useful to, to, to have this uh, technology for remote sensing, both in optical and in the microwave domain, to, to have information of uh, the changes in the, in the agricultural patterns or mapping different uh, crop types, uh, uh, measuring different biophysical parameters uh, from, from different uh, crops. Uh, one of the more important aspects of it is uh, also as you know, we have uh, floods in, uh, happening in India, and, uh, it's, it's a very real situation in India, so it's also useful to, to map a flooded area and maybe also make some of the uh, uh, models which we can have an early warning systems uh, for mitigating this kind of problems. In Latin America, the main issue is deforestation of the Amazon. In the Brazilian context, uh, the issue of deforestation in the Amazon, for example, has become increasingly popular. The world is concerned about the destruct destructive impacts that the largest tropical force in the world has been suffered year after year, and that can be extrapolated to the world's forest. Therefore, uh, neglecting uh, to monitor natural resources, forest resources, and associated ecosystem service is very dangerous and irresponsible. Across Europe, there's been an increasing number of heat waves and drought. So we, we saw in the last years um, a very dramatic um, climatic effects on a local scale. Uh, so we had in the central Europe, we had uh, 2018, 2000, 2020, very um, dramatic heat waves, uh, long lasting heat waves. Uh, with, um, large effects to the society, to agriculture and so on. Um, and last, or this year, this summer, uh, we had uh, dramatic floods in our area. Um, and people should uh, know where this comes from. 
In Africa, they're looking at remote sensing to create data as a service that allows for sustainable decision making. If you're a farmer in the country, you get a water license uh, provided to you. Government used to have what we called water police are uh, going from farmer to farmer, checking the, the license that they were given and trying to work out whether they're using the water at the time that they meant to use and they're using the amount of water that they meant to use. Now we use Earth Observations as part of the modeling that, uh, that supports government for making sure that the water licenses are adhered to. In Australia, the frequency and intensity of bushfires is increasing. We think that uh, satellite remote sensing is going to be a really big important part of continuing to track and help um, decision makers understand the magnitude of some of these changes. The research which we carry out today will be important for tomorrow. And many people say we are in the golden age of remote sensing. We have so many sensors. We have seen uh, over the decades that it becomes this data becomes useful, not one in supporting the decision making process at the start of a decision being made, but also monitoring policies. In a world with an ever changing climate, it's more important now than ever before that geoscientists have state of the art sensors. I think. The future will make it a lot more accessible, easy to use uh, for everybody uh, in terms of Earth observation access to data and information that they can derive from that data. My research is relevant to people's lives. Uh, I think that uh, it's, it's very, very gratifying to be able to do work that might in some way, even if it's a small way, help people in the future. All what we do can be used to improve the life of people or to save people. GRSS scientists are creating ever more accurate sensors that are helping geoscientists understand our interactions with our ecosystem better than ever before.